Hey, I'm Mishka and we are back in the Viva Kitchen. And today we have a very, very special guest. It is the king of kindness, the king of vegan food here in South Africa. I am speaking about Jay Mack. <laughs> hey, Jack. That was quite a title. <laughs> A well-deserved title. You're from the Kind Kitchen, so yeah. it's all, that's what you're all about. Yeah, thanks, Mishka. And super uh, amped to be here. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be making one of our most popular dishes, which is the Dark Side Burger. How do we begin? Okay, so what we're going to do, Mishka, is I'm going to start with the batter. All right, and I'm going to talk the audience through that. And if you can start getting some oil going there, we're going to start cooking up these beauties. So how we make the mushroom taste very good is we've got to sear it a little bit, we've got to add a little bit of flavor to it, and think of this as your chicken, if you will, all right? So ultimately, we're making like a, a zinger, oh. a zinger kind of burger. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So you're going to get started on that, so get some oil going there. Which oil do you want yeah. to use? So we're going to use two today, but the one for just uh, searing the, the mushrooms right now, we're going to start with the, the blend oil from you guys, from Be Well. So it's got the canola and the olive oil, so it's got the best of both worlds here. Um, I'll let you talk the nerdy kind of stuff, but the reason that I use this one in the kitchen, firstly, it's local, right? We all know local is lacquer, and it's made a process just down the road here from us where we're, where we're standing right now. Price-wise, we're talking at a good entry point for price, okay? And in a commercial kitchen, a lot of the times we've got to look at those things to keep the prices down for you guys out there. So okay. true, so, so true. I know why I'm using this and why I love it in my kitchen. High smoking point doesn't change the flavor of your food and still adds a little bit of the goodness of that Omega 3 from your canola and the olive oil, yay. So talk to us about the high sm uh, smoking point because a lot of people don't even know about that. Okay, cool. So this has a high amount of oleic acid and what that means is that you can actually cook at high temperatures without denaturing. So the oil doesn't change its consistency it doesn't become really like a bad quality. Like carcinogenic. None kind of. of that. Well, you know, over long periods of time, you, you ought to change your oil. But this one is going to prevent, so you can actually cook for a lot longer on higher heat without getting to that point. So we've got about close to 500 grams of oyster mushrooms here. And we're working at about a 120 gram burger patty per person. We're going to add a little bit of lime and add about a teaspoon of the soy sauce. Next thing we're going to do, take a pot. And then we're just gonna place that weight down. So now that weight is gonna start to sear the mushrooms and we're gonna get a beautiful char grilledness happening. Keep that at a medium heat for about three, four minutes and then we're gonna turn it. Okay, Mish? Okay, amazing. All right, Got so while it. that's happening, what's going on here is we're gonna make a batter. We have uh, all-purpose flour. Uh, if you want it to be fluffier, you can also sieve it and be what all about gluten -free? fancy. So if you want it gluten-free, gluten-free or purpose you do okay, get cool. that mixture next we have two teaspoons of baking powder that's just going to aerate and add a little bit more fluffiness then we've got about a teaspoon of salt then we're going to add in two teaspoons of onion powder and we've got one teaspoon of garlic we're using uh, sparkling water that's also going to just help aerate it all right so i've got a half a liter here Okay, so you see that liquid starting to come out of the mushroom now, that's all the water. So turn them all around and let's do the other side now. And you won't need any more liquid for the moment and then replace that weight. Now we can start with the slaw, Mish. One cup of white cabbage. We have one cup of red cabbage. <laughs> purple cabbage. Looks like purple to me. I don't know why they call it red. So. Nutrients, health benefits. Amazing, they are from the Brassica family. So these are actually part of the leafy greens, high in antioxidants, high in vitamin C, excellent for flavonoids, especially now for summer. If you want to get in your flavonoids, not natural antihistamines, flavonoids, <laughs> get your, your, your red or purple cabbage in. All right, cool. So we're going to add that and then kale. Now this is actually the king of leafy greens. We've got the king of kindness holding the king of leafy greens. We're going to make a kale slaw, not a coleslaw, yeah. a kale slaw. All right, just made that up. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're going to add all of that together. So we're going to take eight tablespoons. We have four different types of mayo. Why this? Flavor profile wise, I enjoy this one in the dark side. So I've tried the tangy. 
it's a little bit too tangy for me because we add the lime and the zestiness of these other ingredients. And we've also got uh, the pineapple. So fruit flavor wise, I think we're covered there. So this one's more of a neutral flavor for me at least. Uh, we can do a little bit more with it. And we're also gonna be adding peri peri. So a little bit more base level. I've noticed that this is one of our most versatile mayonnaises that we have. Um, do you know that this can even be used for baking? Yeah. To replace the egg. Yeah, right. Mr. I, Vegan, there we go. You know, <laughs> okay, so I've got to admit something here. I, that's where I suck. Baking, oh my goodness. Um, not my skill level. Uh, pretty much will burn. And as you can see, not my skill level using a spoon. So, I'm gonna release it. Oh, that's much better. All right, right. so, so in the kale. Kale always starts to really get better when you massage it. And that's all I'm talking about. So if you're gonna use a cashew cream or something like that, if you've ever noticed it's a little bit tough, just massage it a little bit. I mean, who doesn't like a good massage, right? We've got a new team player here called uh, Mr. Food Processor. So we're gonna take our nacho chips, this is one of the quickest, easiest ways to make a, a really good tasting batter. Cool. Next thing, uh, Mish, do you wanna, before we dip that, you wanna get some oil going there. Sure, um, I'll do that. And the oil we're gonna use, Nerd Alert, is? Fry well, be well, fry well. Like I mentioned before, another oil with high oleic acid, which is great, especially for those fried foods. Now, I present flour. Nachos libres. What cheese is never yours? What cheese is never mine? Nacho cheese. Nacho. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I would get that, but I was like in another world there. Wow. Delicious. Like a proper chicken fillet. We've got four pineapples, all right? I'm just gonna add the remaining soy sauce. So it's about two tablespoons of soy sauce. The next part to this is we're gonna sear the pineapple and of course adding the element that makes it the dark side, peri peri. It seems like the oil is hot. Okay. What is the next step, Jay? Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. What are you doing with those pineapples? So the pineapples from under the sea with SpongeBob, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna sear them, a little bit of soy sauce. Now, we've added a bit of soy sauce to add in a bit of that umami that we spoke about earlier. Now you can see they almost get a little bit syrupy, which is awesome. Okay, we've added a bit of this canola olive oil blend. Next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of lime here. Uh, what we're gonna do now is toast our charcoal buns. Now, charcoal buns also have the added benefit of activated charcoal in them. But the main thing here is the reason we're using it is just for the coolness, the coolness factor of the dark side, okay. Tell us quickly why the dark side, where did that come from, Jay? Oh, man, <laughs> I guess I was just heading towards being sued by Disney at some point, you know, so using Star Wars wherever I can and making a name for myself that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm just a fan of Star Wars, comic books. Cool, um, okay, you know, okay, definitely the dark side. I mean, I did open my closet this morning and look, I think I should try a different shirt, but I think I only have Star Wars <laughs> shirts at this point. The next thing we're gonna do is add cheese to these fillets. We're gonna show you a quick hack here as well. Add two of your fillets of choice, and then we're gonna melt the cheese on it. Now I'm gonna add our kale slaw. I'm, only, mm. I'm just imagining just how much phytonutrients you are actually getting from this. Yeah, it's and protein from and the mushrooms. protein, you know, um, needed fiber. Then we're gonna add our pineapple. Now, Peri Peri. The cheese is melting away quite nicely there. Mish just added a touch of water just to add a little bit of steam into the environment and getting that coconut based cheese. Okay, so they are looking beautiful. What's next? Only to smash it in your face and enjoy. Ah, oh, okay. Guys. Mm. 
I would never, ever, ever, ever say that this is a plant burger because of the texture of that, that patty. If you love this and you want to check out more, check out more of Be Well, but definitely go to the Kind Kitchen or grab yourself a dark side burger or grab yourself a dark side wrap. Plant-based, vegan power.